something's wrong. Something's very wrong. I look down and see a sudden spurt of blood splattering the stones below me, and then another spurt, and another. I step back again and gasp, and when I do, it feels like the air comes in from two places at once, and I cough as something liquid goes down my throat the wrong way. Again, I gasp, and this time I hear a bubbling sound from my throat, and I finally understand what's happened as I raise my hands to my neck, stumbling and falling. I expect to slam back and against the stone seats, but instead it's against something fuzzy, furry, and warm. I look up and see Nefera sitting over me as he'd moved to catch me with his laugh. He's staring at me with a look of horror on his face. Marco, he looks up. Amicus! Amicus, wake up and help him! I frown, still worried about Cato. And sure enough, as I look forward, I see the false emperor on one knee, clasping his neck, bleeding just as much as I am. His ears are perked forward, toward Nefera's voice, and I see him start to make his way toward us. Kimian. The wolf's eyes are wild, furious, focused in the direction of Neferu. He seems to have already forgotten me, even as he seems to realize that he's dying. You. You caused this. I feel that those words, you and this, carry much more meaning for Kato than I, would, than I could ever hope to know. It's a strange moment as I lay in Nefera's lap, bleeding out. I suppose I knew Cato blamed the Chemians for most of his problems, for most of the problems in the Empire. I tried to hide it by pretending to give Amicus a fair shot at the Emperorship, and that slowly unraveled. His intentions became clear, and so did his insanity. He intends to kill Nefera to completely kill any chance of an alliance, even if it means the complete destruction of the Wolven Empire. Somehow that's a risk worth taking for Cato. The old wolf draws closer, practically crawling now, leaving heavy spatters of blood across the ground. He weakly raises the dagger, and I feel Neferu tense behind me, probably getting ready to roll out of the way. Something wraps around Cato's neck. With a gargled choke, Cato is pulled back by Amicus before being body slammed to the ground. And Amicus is on the old wolf, muscle against his neck, tearing it apart. I stare in shock, then look down, away from the horror that I'm, what I'm seeing. And that's when I see myself covered in blood. So, so much blood. My entire naked torso is painted red, and more of it continues to pour over my chest in waves, though it's less than the initial spurts I'd seen when I was standing up. I raise my hands to my neck, still feeling that strange, cold feeling reaching, into my th reaching in deep into my throat like everything's open and exposed to the air. I try to talk, to tell Neferu that I need help, when only a raspy, bubbling hiss comes out of my neck. I look up, seeing Neferu looking down at me, his expression again one of disbelief. I suppose it would be pretty shocking to see your friend with his neck open, dying in your lap. Am I dying? I try to cover my neck again, but the gash is so deep, feels like if I lean too far back, my head will just flop over onto my back. Vaguely, I hear Amicus' snarling sounds, along with Cato's raspy screams, sounding just like me when I was trying to talk. The edges of my vision start to go bl blurry and black, and the fairy's face starts to fade away. And suddenly there's a big shift, and I wake back up. This time finding Amicus looking down at me. An overwhelming sense of relief comes over me. I do get to see my wolf after all. I smile up at him, even if he isn't even as he stares at me, with a look of complete and utter devastation. No, 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 please get Felix! Virginia! Tell Alex to get Felix! His tears start to fall on my face, and I reach up trying to brush them away like it's done for me a few times. He catches my hand before I can move, pressing it back up to my neck. You'll be fine. You're going to be fine. It's not bad. It's not bad. I actually chuckle a little at that because this is very bad. I can tell without even being able to 
was here. I see the edges of my vision blurring again, and my eyes seem to try and roll upward on their own. Anakis gives me a little shake that brings me back for a moment. Hey, hey, stay here, okay? You'll stay with me, yeah? I nod deliriously, the overwhelming feeling of calm and warmth keeping me happy and full of love. Even though I know what's happening, it's about to happen to me. I'm here. I try to speak, but I only send more bubbling blood out of my neck. You know, you don't need to talk. I have you. How unfair. My last moments and I can't even tell my wolf that I love him. I reach up with my free hand, setting it gently against Anakis' face. I caress his cheek softly, knowing he, even though he holds it against his face with his own free paw, he shakes his head at me. Stop that. You're going to be fine. Lux will heal you. We'll rest in my room. I'll take you to the island. I'll take you to the city. We'll be happy. We'll grow old. Together. The tears start spilling over again, and I just try to keep the smile on my face. Show Amicus that I'm okay. That I'm happy. That this is all okay. And though his grief is hard to look at, there's nothing I'd rather be seeing at the end. My wolf's face, framed by the pinkish reds of the sunset. And then... As my eyes start rolling back again, I can't stop them, no matter how hard Anakis shakes me. Marco, no, please, don't leave me here. Please, come back to me. You can't leave me to be alone like this. I'm here. No, no, no. Speak to me. I'm staying with you. <laughs>